I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I've been working with my team on how we improve and move through our internal projects, specifically how we achieve our goals. So we have our objectives at the high level, we have our key results, we have all the tasks that need to be completed to get us to achieve that goal. And so I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a scrum environment. Now I will preface this by saying that we're not doing the traditional scrum. We're not running the traditional ceremonies. We do not have a scrum master. Um, we're not using points or stories. We are using estimated time inside of Asana and so what I'm doing is I'm giving you a take on a light version of Scrum and we're doing it the surface way but if this is your first time here and you have no idea who I am my name is Marky Murray I am the CEO of surface we are a proud Asana partner and I make videos like this every single week to help you get the most out of your Asana instance now I'm gonna show you something in a second we're gonna get into Miro I'm gonna give you a high-level overview of what we're talking about today and then I'm gonna switch back to Asana so you can see exactly what this looks like so if you are a dev team or a product team this might not be the scrum video for you this is for agencies this is for consultancies this is for teams that want to achieve better results assess workload and capacity within their teams this is the video for you all right so I'm going to show you our modified take on what scrum can look like inside of Asana let's get into the demo so first I'm going to show you around Miro to give you a high level understanding of what we're actually looking at today so just got a quick little wireframe here so you can see what we're going to be looking at then we'll jump over to Asana so within the Asana goals module well, we're gonna have our objective. This is our top level company goal, our objective of what we want to achieve within the desired time frame. Next, we have our different sub goals, which in this case will be all of our key results. So every objective will have multiple key results or sub goals, all right? And then next what we've done is as a measure of effort, or as a metric, we've used the automatic method by tracking our goal success here. And we're tying that to a project. So each key result we tie to a project. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Second. And then within that project, we'll have a list of tasks. So in this case, we have our key result one. And then for Q3, that's where we're starting. We have key result one, backlog of tasks. This project is simply a backlog and each key result will have one. So that means each key result owner will have a project associated with that key result. All right. And then within that backlog project, we're going to have our different list of tasks here. So for this example, I have eight tasks. But as you can see, these are Q3, key result one tied to the project. Task one, task two, three, four, five, all through it, all the way through eight, all right? So what's important to note is that within the Asana project backlog, these tasks will stay here until it's time to sprint them, okay? So we'll go through and each week, we'll pass the individual to kind of look through their list of tasks and assess what they feel they can complete in the next sprint cycle. And they'll move those tasks into our master sprint board. So let's go there. So again, we're gonna take these two tasks as an example, task one and task two, all right? And it says we're gonna select these tasks we're going to multi-home them to our master sprint board so here is our asana master sprint board we're running sprints in two week cycles i know some teams will run in two week cycles we have the first week is the actual sprint and then the second week is more or less the overflow to take care of tasks that didn't get completed in that sprint don't come at me in the comments i know this is not standard practice we want to have one week sprints we want to assess the work we want to get it done within that time frame and anything that isn't accomplished either gets moved to the next sprint or gets reevaluated and so again we're giving ourselves two weeks because we're looking at achieving our goals here and we don't want to rush things we want things to be quality so we're giving our team enough time and we have to consider that with our team we're delivering to customers right so our customers will come first so at least this two week cycle gives us some flexibility to be able to work within those projects so here we have the tasks are assigned they're given due dates given estimated time and then moved into in progress when they are ready so we'll take our various tasks in this case we'll have one in to do we've assigned it we've given it a due date within the next two weeks and then we've given it an estimated time we're moving it through in progress for review if needed if it's blocked we have an automation in asana i'll show you in a second of what that looks like and how our scrum master or in this case our coo will, will intervene then we'll get them through done and once they're done each uh, team member will have a retrospective card or task within the master sprint board within that we have subtasks that get them to answer the questions you know what went well what didn't go well what were the lessons learned these will all be subtasks and what I've done is I've assigned the two week sprints for the remainder of the year so we've got six months left two quarters we've got 13 of these subtasks with defined dates that will bring us all the way until the end of the year so if you're starting in Jan 1 you're gonna have 26 of these and I'll show you what that looks like inside of a sun all right so once the retrospective is done and I will say this is another modification we're not having daily stand-ups okay because nobody needs more meetings 
and then we are doing virtual retrospectives where every team member is just required at the end of the sprint cycle to not only do their retro and update their subtask but also plan for the next sprint all right so we're cutting back on meetings to focus on remote teams and helping them be more efficient and not get bogged down so just another way we're trying to eliminate burnout by just adding more to people's plates and so once we're done with the retrospective we start the whole cycle over again we go back to our backlog and we pull the next set of tasks that we feel we can accomplish in the next sprint cycle as a proud asana partner surface specializes in building projects and portfolios to streamline and automate marketing processes if you're a marketing manager vp or director and you're looking to transition your team to asana and you're overwhelmed by the prospect of moving all of your marketing projects and workflows to the new platform don't sweat it at Surface, we handle everything from A to Z, from mapping all of your processes to the data migration and even training your team to ensure alignment and efficient use of the tool. So if you're considering moving to Asana, click the link below and book a call with us to learn more. All right, so now let's go into Asana and see what this looks like real time. So I'm gonna start up at the top. Here we have our company goals. So again, we've got all of our objectives here and we click in. We run on EOS, so I'm using OKRs for the purpose of this video, but we typically would have our goals and then our rocks. So you're gonna see Q3R, that's Q3 rock in this case, but just imagine it's a key result, all right? So I'm gonna go in. Again, we've got our objective up top. That was the first block that I showed you okay so let's just zoom out again that's right over here okay and then we've got our various uh, key results here okay these are our sub goals all right so let's go back those are all those right there and then within this we're going to have a project so again we have the automatic measure here to update the progress and it's based on connected projects so rather than having multiple projects we've chosen just one project okay so let's just go back that's this project right here see we're moving through this the stages and I'm gonna click into this here and go to our backlog. Now here, let's just add in some more tasks. So we got task one, two, three, four, and I had eight in my example, so let's just add two more. There we go. So again, this is the stage we're at right now. So these are all of our key result tasks. Yeah, they are. So what we'll do now is I'll come in and I'll say, okay, great. I'm gonna take these two tasks and I'm gonna sprint these two. So first off, I'm gonna assign them to myself, okay? And then I'm going to, actually, let's just do that as well. I'm gonna multi-home them to our master sprint board. There it is. And I'm gonna go over to our master sprint board. So we're gonna see our tasks come in. They go into the to-do section, all right? They're ready for me to start sprinting. So I'm going to take this first one, this task one, based on the definition of done that I've assigned it in the goals module. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, this is going to take me three hours like so. And I'm going to get this done. Again, we're giving ourselves two weeks. I'm going to get this one done by Wednesday. All right. And then I'm going to set a priority. This one's high priority. So I want to make sure I get to it first. And then this is going to be in sprint cycle. Imagine we're starting July 1. And again, these are 13 sprint cycles we have for the rest of the year and there we go it's going into sprint one and we're going to move it into in progress number two here this one is going to get done not this week but the week after i'm going to give myself until the ninth there estimated time so gonna take 10 hours maybe and then priority is going to be medium for this one and it's going to go in the same sprint cycle and again go into in progress cool so now we've got our tasks in again every team member will have their own version of this this is just a template we're using um, i even added in a little SOP on how to use this project with all the steps, resources that they need, just so that they feel well equipped. So pause to read if you want. But each team member, based on the key results that they're responsible for, will have their own project just like this, okay, with one simple section. So let's go back to our master sprint board. And now we will close this up like so. All right, so we're gonna move these through. It's for review if needed. When we go to the blocked section, here's what I've done. So first off, it changes it to blocked. As you can see, it adds a subtask, okay? I'll do the same with this one because I want you to see what happens. It goes from medium priority to high priority as well. Okay, so it's going to switch over. There we go. And now it's blocked. So now it's created a subtask. And I'll show you what this subtask looks like in our rules. Like so. There we go. Okay, so with this here, when task is moved to the section blocked, we're going to set the scrum stage to blocked. Okay, we're going to set the priority to high. And then we've created a subtask that assigns it to our COO here. So it says assess block task.
task and create an action plan. So within this, if hey Kate, this task is blocked and at risk of not being completed in this sprint, please connect with the rule triggerer. So in this case, it's me. I moved the card to block, so I'm the rule triggerer, so that will come up um, as who Kate needs to connect with. But if it was another team member, their name would show up here. So we're using variables. If you're not sure how variables work, you simply come into the rule. You're gonna click on this plus here, click on variable, and then I went to people and rule triggerer. Or you could do task creator, but in this case, I clicked the default for display URL name or at mention that person. So that's how we did that there. Great, now we save this and you know what that looks like now. So again, let's go into this task or subtask, see what it looks like. So great, there's marquee, the rule triggerer. And then once we move it to done, obviously we are done. All right, and so it's gonna complete that task. I could have added an automation that said, hey, congratulations, maybe I will. Congratulations, you uh, will be confetti or something. You completed another task or one closer to achieving our goals, right? Have some kind of like little celebration is something we'll probably add in here. All right, and then what we'll do at the end of that cycle is here our retrospective, all right? So now we have a card for every individual. So I'm gonna go into my own and it says copy and paste the following template into the subtask below. So I'm gonna do what it says and I gotta remember to add a period there. So let's copy this, there we go. I'm gonna go into one of my 13 uh, sprint cycles here. Again, we're starting at Q3. If you're starting Jan 1, this will be, you'll obviously have 26 of them here, but we'll go in here and these can be assigned every two weeks as well to you so you don't forget. There we go, what went well, what didn't go well, a few things, and then what lessons learned can be applied to future sprints. Lots of lessons like so and then it says here just be sure to document your lessons learned either in the relevant SOP or wherever you put your lessons learned I'm not gonna show you that in this video and then we're all done for this uh, sprint cycle and then guess what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna go into my planning for the next sprint so that's when I'll go back to my backlog here great we've completed this task this one should have been completed as well let's just move that to done there you go so we've completed task one and task two now it's time to do the whole thing over again I'm gonna to address these next two tasks in my second sprint cycle. So I'm gonna add them in again here in case you missed it, just like so. All right, let's go in and we're gonna put this into the, to the next sprint cycle. Okay, so that's all we're doing here. And then we're starting the whole thing over again, putting in our estimated time and removing it through. So this was just a really quick example of what this can look like. Again, this is modified. Think of your own use case when you're looking at this. If you liked this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with someone. I get these questions so often of what does Scrum look like? And if you're looking for traditional Scrum, I've got multiple videos on that topic. Just go check out those videos if you want to know what traditional Scrum looks like in Asana. This is a modified version, so I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, ask a question, and as always, thank you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.